Now, Iran's president-elect has met with a deputy leader of the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah in Tehran. Masoud Pezeshkian, seen here on the right, is taking office at a time of soaring tensions in the Middle East. Israel blames Hezbollah for a rocket strike that killed 12 children in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights over the weekend. Hezbollah's chief ally is Iran, which the US and Israel say is fueling conflict in the region. Israel and Hezbollah have been exchanging missiles and rocket fire for months, with fears of a wider regional conflict mounting after the latest attack on a Druze village in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, which killed 12 young people. Hezbollah has denied any responsibility. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has repeatedly framed this as a fight between Israel and Iran, which backs Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas in Gaza. Netanyahu brought up Iran during his recent address to the U.S. Congress. We meet today at a crossroads of history. Our world is in upheaval. In the Middle East, Iran's axis of terror confronts America, Israel, and our Arab friends. In addition to Hamas and Hezbollah, Iran also backs the Houthis in Yemen, which have launched a series of attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. The stated aim? To weaken Israel and undermine American influence in the region. Following the October 7th Hamas terror attacks, fighting has intensified. The conflict has opened up fronts in Iraq and Syria, where Iran has encouraged its militias to attack U.S. military bases. The power of the resistance is becoming more evident every day. The Zionist enemy with all the help from America and some treacherous governments, has failed to immobilize or overcome the resistance forces. Ten months into the war, Hezbollah and Israel have carefully calibrated their attacks to prevent an escalation. But the latest strike on a sports field in Israel-controlled territory is once again fueling fears that these isolated incidents could turn into a regional conflict between Israel and its neighbors, near and far. Ricardo Alcaro is with the Institute of International Affairs in Rome. Welcome to DW. Now, with tensions growing between Hezbollah and Israel, what message is the newly elected Iranian president trying to convey by meeting officials from Hezbollah and Islamic Jihad on the day of his inauguration? A message of continuity. I mean, Pazeshkian comes from the reformist camp of uh, Iranian politics, but he becomes president in a very, very difficult uh, uh, moment. Uh, the regional predicament of Iran is volatile, it's dangerous, and Iran has been sticking to its main allies in the region since Israel started its devastating retaliation against Hamas's attack on October the 7th, 2023. So there is no way Pazeshkin can start its uh, presidency without showing allegiance to the network of allies that have been, for the past several decades, or at least two decades, been one of the main pillars of Iran's regional and security policy. The uh, newly elected Iranian uh, president, Pazesh Kian, reportedly told the French president in a telephone call that any Israel attack on Lebanon will have serious consequences for Israel. Do you think we could see another Iranian attack on Israel anytime soon? There is, there is certainly a possibility, uh, although I don't think it is very much likely. Certain conditions uh, must be met in order for Iran to determine that it has the incentive to risk the potential retaliation that it would incur if it were to attack against Israel. And those conditions are the following. Either 
uh, Israel attacks Iran directly on its territory. Second, Israel attacks Iranian diplomatic facilities, as it did uh, in April, which triggered Iran's uh, direct response against Israel. Or third, and this is the one that worries me the most, Israel engages in an all-out war with Hezbollah, and Hezbollah is by far Iran's most important ally in the region, and Iran would not be tolerating the possibility of Hezbollah being destroyed. So at one point, Iran would, would feel the need to intervene in support of Hezbollah if Hezbollah were uh, put in a very difficult spot by an Israeli onslaught. If we could just talk about that scenario three a little bit more. Hezbollah, of course, depends on Iranian support. How much does Iran control Hezbollah's decision in this situation? Look, I think that if Hezbollah wants to do something that the Iranian leadership is adamantly and absolutely opposed to, Hezbollah would have a hard time doing that. But this is really a, a fringe situation. Uh, it's not very likely that this is the way how Iran and Hezbollah would sort out the differences. The decision-making pro processes that Iran and Hezbollah have established over the course of two of two decades, and actually more than two decades, is very much persuasion-oriented, dialogue-based, and it's not like Iran commands and Hezbollah follows. So um, it's not really a matter of control. It's a matter of can they get to some sort of strong uh, consensus between the two about what the red lines are that Israel has to cross in order for Hezbollah to engage in an all-out war. International relations analyst Ricardo Alcaro. Ricardo, thank you so much for your time and for your analysis. Thank you for having me. And let's get more from Makram Raba. He's an assistant professor of history at the American University of Beirut. Welcome, Mr. Raba. How great would you say is the concern in Lebanon that a war with Israel might be on the horizon? Well, actually, the people of Lebanon are in the midst of war, but what they are actually waiting for at the moment is a so-called punitive strike, which Netanyahu and Israel has vowed to do against Hezbollah uh, for targeting the soccer pitch in the Julan and the killing of the 13 children. So basically, everyone is anxious because no one knows, including Hezbollah, what will be the extent of the strike. And at the same time, no one knows how will Hezbollah retaliate. But as is, everyone has telegrammed in a way that they don't want a full-scale escalation or a total war, not because they want to avoid war, but at least in the mindset of Netanyahu, he cannot fight uh, two fronts at the same time. And Hezbollah and Iran simply want a way out, and they are trying to negotiate this with the Biden administration, but thus far they have failed miserably uh, to convince the international community to force a kind of a ceasefire. Is a response from Hezbollah to any potential Israeli strike dependent on the nature of that Israeli strike? Well, Hezbollah simply cares about the optics, and this is why it all depends on what type of strike the Israelis will take. We have been hearing from the Israeli side something which is similar to the Hodeida scenario, and they have used this term in particular. So they want something theatrical, something that would be sending a message to the international community and to Hezbollah and Iran in particular. However, ironically, sir, there's nothing to destroy in Lebanon anymore. Hezbollah has done this on behalf of the Israelis. At the same time, we don't know if Hezbollah has the ability or its calculated response to any Israeli strike would not spill over and cause a kind of a regional war. Hezbollah depends on Iranian support, but how much uh, does Iran control Hezbollah's decisions in this current situation? Well, Hezbollah, again, is an is a Iranian proxy. And while Hezbollah might have some sort of individual agency on how to fight, the decision to fight comes from Iran and Tehran. And here, we don't want to say that they are ordered, but they are part and parcel and organically connected to the Iran Revolutionary Guard. And the Secretary General of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, carries a kind of weight, and he virtually and figuratively sits on Tehran's war council. So he is allowed to lead the confrontation here. However, the, the overwhelming talking points or the general uh, direction of the conflict has been set by Tehran.
And newly elected Iranian President Masoud Pezeshkian reportedly told the French President Emmanuel Macron in a telephone call, I think it was, that any Israeli attack on Lebanon will have, quote, serious consequences for Israel. Does that mean we could potentially see another Iranian attack on Israel? Well, I think the Israelis want, would like a kind of this theatrical light show, which the uh, Iranians did after their embassy was targeted. Because as you are well aware, sir, this has caused the international community to come to the aid of Israel. So if the Iranians continue uh, to do this so-called shadow boxing and try to uh, uh, threaten, threaten Israel's existence and send these rockets across many of the Arab countries, this would be actually beneficial for Netanyahu and his talking points, as well as to the hawks in his cabinet. So I think the Iranian president who claims to be a reformer, doesn't really call the shots in Iran. The people who do are the, are the guards and Khamenei. And at the moment, no one is listening to any sort of logical calls for peace. Everyone wants war, or they want to actually be able to capitalize on the blood of the innocent across, uh, across the border. The, the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah is, of course, uh, closely linked to the war in Gaza, Hezbollah has said it will stop its attacks on Israel as soon as there is a ceasefire in Gaza. Do you believe that? Well, Hezbollah might want to do this because simply even when they opened the so-called front in the south of Lebanon to support the Palestinians, they had failed miserably. Nothing has changed. And the people of Gaza are dying at the same rate as before. However, this idea of unifying the fronts between Lebanon and Israel, this is something that Netanyahu and the Israeli military has chosen not to accept, meaning that after the end of the war in Gaza, the military establishment will have to rethink what it will do in Lebanon. And thus, this idea that the end of the war in Gaza will simply translate in the end of the war in Lebanon is totally unfounded. We'll uh, leave it there for the moment, but thanks so much for joining us today. Makram Rabah from the American Thank University you. of Beirut. Thanks so much.